another episode of Ability to Learn, a show about interesting facts and trivias for your daily knowledge. Happy Monday! Wait, I'm not doing Monday episodes anymore. I'm doing Thursday now. That's right, folks. Two more of our teachers are joining the party. Liz being on Monday and Karina for tomorrow. So let's welcome them with a big round of applause. Anyways, today we'll talk about farm workers, root beers, balloons, and corporate baby names? Ah, the last one's kind of weird. And since I'm kind of trying to become an official YouTuber, I'll say what other YouTubers say. If you're new on the channel, kind of hit that like button, click that bell icon, and subscribe for more daily videos. Okay, let's start by working out as usual, so I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Emily and today we are going to be working with the TheraBand for stretching. The TheraBand is a rubbery piece of equipment that we use at the day program that helps with stretching, range of motion, and resistance to build up muscle. Now, hopefully houses have these TheraBands, but if not, we understand because times are hard right now. Um, there's also different strengths and resistances, so do choose wisely. But later on, we'll be working on boxing. But for now, let's just get started on our TheraBand stretching. So first, what I like to do is wrap my TheraBand around my hands. Kind of feel like a karate warrior when I do this. And I like to have my thumb sticking out, and then I just pull horizontally. So pull it outwards, and you feel your muscles start to work when you pull it. Pull out. I did this probably about 10 times. That was a good, a good uh, number to do this exercise. So pull out 10 times. Yeah. Then when you're done, you can fold your TheraBand in half, which makes the resistance even tougher. I did it in four. Let's see how strong I am. Oh no. Nope. It's too hard. So that's a good uh, piece of advice if, ooh, muscles. That's a good piece of advice if your TheraBand you have at your house is too easy, you can always fold it and make it a tougher resistance. I only did five of those because that was really tiring. But the next one I'm gonna do is um, something we do at the program where we put the TheraBand on the back of your wheelchair. I don't have a wheelchair, so I'm just sitting in an office chair, so I'm tying it to the back of my office chair, pulling it up over my shoulder, and let's just do some basic folds. Two, three, four, five. This really helps you work those arm muscles. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, slowly sit up and have your staff or caregiver help you change to the opposite side. Really gonna stretch out our arms in today's exercise. Let's do another 10 reps. Hopefully you guys are staying healthy. I was sore from the other day's stretching workout, which is sad, but it's good to get moving again. What do you guys think? All right, now stop if you want and do some, yeah, stop and, ooh, you don't wanna hit yourself in the face, no. So hold it really tightly. Hold it as tight as you can, because if you let go, it'll slap you in the face and that's just. So you're gonna do a 90 degree, or a square elbow bend. So pull it, and we're gonna be making a square. Whew, that is hard work. Pull it and bring it up. So rather than just pushing straight out, we're kind of doing a curl up like we would do with our biceps, you know, when we have muscles. So this is a good exercise to strengthen your biceps. Also just keep the range of motion going. All right, so finally, what I like to do is keep it open. It kind of looks like a big spaghetti noodle. And then fold it in half and bring it up over your head and stretch, that feels good. Now when you pull it like this, your arms tend to go backwards a little bit and the TheraBand will go behind your head. This is normal and it also actually helps to loosen up your back a little bit and expand your range of motion in your shoulders. Do what you can. A lot of you uh, have trouble reaching up over your heads, so go as high as you can, but let's try and get those arms up. 
Now, here's my long spaghetti noodle theraband. Um, some of you find it easier to tie it in a knot at one end so that we make a circle. So let me tie it for you. And ta-da, we have a circle. Now, it's easier for some to do more exercises like this way. If uh, you don't have good hand grip, you can use your wrists and just pull it. But that is it for today, guys. And we are going to come later to learn boxing. And stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back to our lesson today, which is boxing. So we are going to do some boxing with different weights, therabands, and even I have boxing gloves. I pulled out of the garage. So we are going to learn different types of boxing techniques, which are four. And you can use these throughout any exercise. You can also use this with a TheraBand. So, oh, no, there's no Emily, it's not a scarf. No, it is a stretching and muscle toning piece of equipment, yeah. So you use it like that. If you don't have one at home, like we previously mentioned, it's okay. You can use a weight for this exercise. Um, try and use like a one pound because here I'm using two pounds and that is just too heavy. Yeah, no, don't tell anybody. I'll tell people it's 20 pounds. All right, now let's go ahead and loosen up a little bit. We just did our TheraBand stretching, but let's loosen up our muscles and stretch them out especially our shoulders and our upper back because that is what we will be focusing on today. Go ahead and start with some trunk twists. We did some trunk twists earlier this week when we were doing our exercise. Go ahead and do some windmills with your arms. If you have no room side to side, do these windmills. I have a wall next to me, so I have to do this. So pretend that somebody's sitting next to you. If you have somebody sitting far away from you, you can do these side-to-side -side stretches. Either one works, just as long as you're moving your shoulder muscles. All right, shake out your hands. We're gonna curl our wrists. Shake, shake, shake. All right, loosen up your fingers. All right, now, this is pretty cool, guys. I found boxing gloves in my garage. I'm a pro, I know. Let me put them on. I feel like Muhammad Ali. All right, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready. Now, wait a minute. Nobody told you how hard it was gonna be. And look, my thumb isn't even protected. That is not good. Okay, so if I get hurt, what? Okay, now how am I supposed to strap this on with one glove? Oh, there, I did it. All right, now getting them off is gonna be a challenge. So, I have my boxing gloves. This is our boxing stance, our ready position. Keep it kind of right below your chin. So put your arms up right below your chin, and we're gonna start with a jab. The jab is just a push forward. Push, push. Push, push, push. Back to ready position. Okay, so that's the jab. That's one of the most basic moves. Next, we have the cross. You're gonna go across your body with alternating arms. Across, across. I'm just using boxing gloves because it shows up better on the camera than my hands. Yep, there's my thumbs. If you don't have boxing gloves, that's okay. Just follow along. Next is the hook, the hook shot. So you bring it around and back to your chin. Bring it around and back to your chin. Bring it around, bring it around. Good. All right, and finally, our last one we're gonna learn is the uppercut. Put your boxing gloves or your hands by your chin, ready position and you're gonna swing upwards. Swing upwards. Yeah, you guys are getting the hang of this. I tell you guys, this is a really good workout and I'm just sitting in a chair. All right. Now, the real challenge. How do I get these gloves off? My dentist is not gonna be happy with me. 
All right, so you just learned all four boxing techniques. Let's try doing it with our trusty friend, the Theraband. That's a chair. I am going to, again, put the Theraband on the back of my chair. You can put it on the back of your wheelchairs and wrap it around you. I saw this on YouTube. A lady was teaching seniors how to box with Therabands. So she put it behind her and you just do your boxing techniques like you would, but now you're adding some resistance to it. So resistance means that you're making it a little bit harder for yourself, um, but you know, you can't accomplish a lot if you're just doing things the easy way. So it's always good if you can to add a little bit of a challenge into your workout. So now we're doing the cross pushes or punches that we were doing earlier, just like we were doing boxing, but now we are pulling this TheraBand. All right, now, who can tell me what move this is? Going around and back to your chin. Yeah, this is the hook move. So this one, we're pulling the TheraBand out even farther. So that's a good one, but let's do our uppercuts now. Up. All right, up, up. Remember, please don't hit yourself in the face or your neighbor. We are just doing some personal muscle strengthening here while we're all at home. All right, once we're done with that, thank you TheraBand, but I'm tired. My arms are feeling the burn. Time out. Let's get some water. Make sure you have water at home. Drink up. No, yeah, sweating. It's hot today. Now, if you have weights at home, now would be a good time to bring it out. You can do the same punching moves with weights. So I'm showing you three different types of a workout within one. So you can punch with just your hands with the boxing gloves, with the TheraBand, and now we're using a weight, which it's again, it's only my two pound, and we're gonna move on to the cross punches. Just two pounds, so if you have a one pound weight, or you could even use a water bottle, something like that, that would just help you, you know, push yourself a little bit more during this exercise. Now, this one's called the hook. Did you see my little pirate hook there? Hook. Like Captain Hook. Go around and back. Yeah. You guys, I'm learning a lot of new exercises by doing these videos. All right, uppercuts. Don't hit yourself in the face, Emily. At home, don't hit yourself in the face or your neighbor. Don't go too hard, just enough to get a workout in, yeah. All right, shake it out, take a deep breath, and relax. Oh, it's my TheraBand. How about we do some boxing with our TheraBand again? This is probably one of the easiest ways to box is with the TheraBand. So let's wrap it around our hands like we did in the beginning, and we're going to push straight out. Make sure you have a good grip on it so it doesn't come loose. Let's see, we'll just stretch that there, then stretch, stretch, stretch. So every time you do some of these punches, you're strengthening your muscles. Now we're doing our cross body punches. These are really simple exercises that you guys can do at home while you're sitting in your chair, while you're watching TV. So I'm gonna change position on my hands on the TheraBands. Grab it a little bit tighter. And I folded it in half, which is good because it's strong, it makes it stronger. Now, we can do the same thing with the weights and the boxing gloves. 
if you don't have either of these, it's fine. Just do your best with whatever you have. Let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. Good. All right, let's do uppercuts. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, so I'm doing these without anything in my hands. Just because, let's say, uh, you guys are at home and you don't have any exercise materials. This is still a perfectly good um, workout routine that you don't need any extra materials. It's just beneficial um, if you have them. So, we're gonna keep doing our jabs. Jab, jab, jab. You guys can do it in different sequences to rhythms. If you have songs at home, you can play some songs and go uppercut, 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 uppercut. You know, and really learn these moves. Because as long as you're moving your body, you're getting in a good workout. All right, now let's do some hooks. Now, without all of this equipment, this exercise seems really easy. So that's the goal of resistance training, is that you, your body builds up tone and muscle to the harder stuff. And then when you don't have it, then these daily moves seem easier. I'm just doing some more hooks, showing you how to do it just barehanded. That'll do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something with the TheraBands, the weights, or the boxing techniques. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and have fun on the daily show. Bye. Our first observance is Wiggle Your Toes Day. What could be a more fun way to start your day other than wiggling your toes? And after you guys do that, maybe we can talk about some cool facts about your toes. You may already know that your big toes carry most of the load of your body, but you probably haven't noticed that your big toes only have two bones instead of three compared to the rest of your toes. Well, that's because having less segments makes your big toes uh, stronger than the rest. Another fun fact is that the current world record for standing on tiptoes goes to Narayan Akaria in Nepal. In 2019, he walked for 103 feet while on tiptoes. Wow, all I can say is, that was totally awesome. Next is Balloons to Heaven Day. Balloon releases are ceremonial events where balloons filled with hydrogen or helium are released together in the sky as a part of prayer ceremonies or to raise awareness about a cause or a campaign as or as part of a celebration. Today, however, for the Balloons to Heaven Day, balloons are released in a symbolic gesture towards ending gun violence. The day helps bring awareness to the pain and suffering that gun violence causes to American families. Well, next up, we have Farm Worker Appreciation Day. Today we celebrate these amazing people who provide us with our daily food, the farm workers. They are the ones taking care of plants and animals for us to eat. And yes, farms are not necessarily just about plants. There are also animal farms and fish farms too. Farm workers also work on big lands, way bigger than your backyard, so it could be tough. So thank you farm workers for your hard work and dedication to provide quality meat and produce. Next is Corporate Baby Name Day. Okay, here comes the weird one. In 2001, American Baby Magazine conducted a poll asking if parents would sell the naming rights of their babies to a corporation for half a million dollars. Some of the corporation names listed as examples were Pepsi, Friskies, Kleenex, Budweiser, and G. 21% of respondents said that they would while 28% said that they would consider it. The results were released on this day. So basically what this observance is, it's about naming your baby or naming a baby corporate names. You know, like, like just the ones mentioned a while ago. I just wonder how would that work? Adidas, why did you break my mug? I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, my brother Nike told me to just do it.
And our last observance for today is National Root Beer Float Day. I love this one. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Well, like always, if your diet allows, grab a root beer and then scoop a vanilla ice cream and voila, you have yourself a delicious root beer float, which is also perfect for a hot summer. On this day in 1926, on her second attempt, 19-year-old Gertrude Ederell became the first woman to swim 21 miles from Dover, England to Cap Grigny across the English Channel, which separates Great Britain from the northwestern tip of France. And also on this day in 1965, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act, guaranteeing African Americans the right to vote. The bill made it illegal to impose restrictions on federal, state, and local elections that were designed to deny the vote to African American citizens of the United States. For our notable figure born today, happy birthday to one of the most influential artists of the latter part of the 20th century, Andy Warhol in 1928. Andy Warhol was a successful magazine and ad illustrator who became a leading artist of the 1960s pop art movements. He ventured into a wide variety of art forms including performance art, filmmaking, video installations, and writing. Continuing our place of the week, which is Greece, let's discuss some of its wonderful tourist spots and landmarks. As you may know, Greece is home to many ancient monuments and buildings. In fact, Greece has been inhabited by people for more than 3,000 years. Athens, the capital of this country, is widely known as the cradle of Western civilization and the birthplace of democracy. Since they are preserving as many ancient landmarks as possible, the city now presents a somewhat a confusing blend of historical and modern features. Athens is famous for its archaeological ruins and monuments, such as the famous Acropolis, the Parthenon, the ancient Agora, and the Theater of Dionysus, just to name a few. So if you decide to visit this country, stop by its capital and get a good feeling of its rich history and culture that dates back 3,000 years ago. For our animal of the day, let's talk about the kawari. You may not be familiar with this furball, which inhabits parts of South, Central, and North America, or better yet, you might have seen one but mistakenly called it a raccoon. Well, it's okay because in fact, the kawari is closely related to the raccoon. And like its cousin, this mammal is the size of a large house cat and has a ringed tail and hangs out in trees. The main difference between the two though is that the raccoon is active at night while the kawari gets its sleep when it's dark. And speaking of which, as the kawari sleeps, it tucks its nose into its belly. Then during the day, the kawari is all about snacking. It uses its long, flexible nose to probe gaps between rocks and search under piles of leaves for grub. Kawaris eat insects, fruits, rodents, lizards, and small snakes. For our plan of the day, let's talk about the chocolate vine. Okay, now don't get too excited and think that this plant is actually made or produces chocolates. This flower actually releases a chocolate fragrance and opens in purple or white shades, depending on the variety. It blooms in spring, followed by tasty fruit that ripens in late summer. This vine tolerates full shade and considered invasive in many areas. For our art of the day, we have Self-Portrait with Blue Dress by Ellsberg in 1917. This art is a wonderful synthesis of esoteric and theosophical influences. She channeled her source of inspiration into dream images, fantasy figures, auras, and feathery brush marks. Berg has also depicted herself in a chair surrounded by birds, a red triangle, and a sun. Our bird of the day is stride. This word can be either a noun or a verb, which shares the same meaning or definition. And it means to walk with long, decisive steps in a specified direction. And lastly, for our fun fact of the day, did you know that the moon has moonquakes? Well, yeah, you can't call it an earthquake if it doesn't happen here on Earth, right? Moonquakes are less common and less intense than the shakes that happen here on Earth. 
mooncakes are believed... Wait, did I say mooncake? I meant moonquakes. Moonquakes. Moonquakes are believed by the U.S. Geological Survey or USGS scientists to occur due to a tidal stress connected um, to the distance between the Earth and the Moon. show for today guys hope you like it and hope you learned something new don't forget to share your thoughts about the topics we discussed today in the comment section below and also try leaving comments or messages uh, to our new members of the daily show Liz and for tomorrow it will be Karina okay well it's time for me to say as always we'll see you on the next one bye